Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this uh, this service of Harvest Festival. We're going to use one mic only, no lectern, so we don't touch anything, and uh, we'll see how we go. But um, thank you so much for those of you who have been bringing uh, stuff, harvest gifts for distribution. We'll probably take it to the Salvation Army, or possibly nourish in Tunbridge Wells. Um, yeah. So, we've printed off an order of service, and you'll see that as we go through, it's all around the theme of water. So, um, which we didn't realise when we were composing this, that we were going to have such deluges, but um, hey, climate change. The greater heat in a system, the more it will evaporate, the more there is to drop. So, away we go. So, Bob, the organist, is uh, very kindly going to be playing our hymns for us, but we're not going to be singing them, but please feel free to hum along as the service goes through. So, we start our service then by singing, we plough the fields and scatter. Creator God, how great you are. You clothe yourself in light and stretch out the skies like a tent. How abundant are your works, O God. 
The creatures filling the earth and the sea so vast and wide, teeming with innumerable things, both small and great. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. May your glory last forever. May our thoughts always give you pleasure. Please be seated for our time of penitence. And again, this is responsive. God of mercy, we come before you seeking forgiveness. You created a world of beauty. You gave your people paradise. The rivers are polluted. The air in our cities is made impure. Wild animals are hunted, and the whole species are endangered. Forgive us, Lord, for our neglect of your good earth. Us care more for your creation. So I'm going to use an absolution, a prayer of forgiveness and affirmation, which was written by Brother Roger Teze. Come, all who yearn for forgiveness. The Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, has washed over us, and our gracious and holy God beckons and blesses us. Drink deeply of these living waters. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. Holy Spirit, Spirit of the living God, you breathe in us on all that is inadequate and fragile. You make living water spring even from our hurts themselves. And through you, the valley of tears becomes a place of wellsprings. So in an inner life, with neither beginning nor end, your continual presence makes new freshness break through. stand for our affirmation of faith. And it's an affirmation of faith which is specially geared to this season of creation tide, the season which the Church of England has asked us to observe. We believe that God created, creates all things, renews all things and celebrates all things. We believe that God became incarnate on the earth in Jesus Christ, who lived and breathed and spoke among us. He suffered and died upon a cross for all human beings and for all creation. We believe that the Holy Spirit renews the life of creation groans in empathy with every suffering creature and waits for us for the rebirth of the whole creation. We Yeah. 
Testament reading is taken from Ezekiel chapter 47, verses 1 to 12. The river from the temple. The man brought me back to the entrance to the temple, and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. He then brought me out through the north gate and led me around the outside to the outer gate facing east. And the water was trickling from the south side. As the man went eastward with the measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and then led me through water that was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand cubits and led me through water that was knee deep. He measured off another thousand and led me through water that was up to the waist. He measured off another thousand but now it was a river that I could not cross. Because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in, a river that no one could cross. He asked me, Son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, This water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Araba, where it enters the Dead Sea. When it empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Fishermen will stand along the shores from Ingaag to Enguilum. There will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the Mediterranean Sea. But the swamps and the marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit, because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food, and their leaves for healing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> well, that lovely reading which Helen read to us is a prophetic picture that Ezekiel received about God's living water flowing out to refresh and bless all creation. But he's setting the vision in, in the top of topography, the geography of um, Israel. Let's stand for our psalm, which is another psalm of thanksgiving to God, Psalm 65, and especially it's thinking about blessing, the blessing that water is that enables life. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion. And O you who hear prayer, to you all people shall come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, we our transgressions. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. Answer us with awesome deeds of righteousness, O God our Saviour. The one who by 
his strength formed the mountains. Having armed yourself with strength, who stills the roaring of the seas. So that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe of your signs. You visit the earth and water it. You enrich it abundantly. You water its furrows abundantly and level its ridges. You crown the year with your bounty. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Please be seated for the New Testament reading. And just while Chris is coming up, this beautiful screen was made by Anne's, one of Anne's sons, who is a, who is a carpenter and woodworker. And he made this screen specially for Tom's funeral. And, um, uh, and here it is given to the church. So we thank him for that. The reading is taken from John 4, verse 4 to 15. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have done nothing to draw with. I'm sorry. You have done, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself? as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, quite a few years ago now, uh, when I was the vicar of St Stephen's Tunbridge, um, we had a clergy conference. And on this clergy conference, uh, we had to do an exercise to see how clear our thinking was. So, um, yes, I know. Uh, but, um, but, uh, and the, the scenario that was set was that uh, a spaceship with a group of people had crashed on the surface of the moon. 
and uh, there were some supplies in it, but you had to make it to the moon base, uh, which was a bit of a trek away, maybe a day's journey on the moon. And then it had a list of all the things, the supplies that were on your crashed spaceship. And they were saying, would you put these in order of importance of what you'll take with you? So, um, you know, there were things like food or torches in case you ran out of daylight. Um, there were, anyway, there was a whole variety of things. And I did my best and put down my top ten of what I would need to put in my rucksack in, with my space you know, suit on to do this trek to the safety of the base. Anyway, the person who won said the most important thing you've got to take is water. That person is now the Archdeacon of Bromley. <laughs> uh, and here am I. <laughs> water. Water is not just precious, it's vital. Luckily, it's the most abundant uh, liquid on the planet. Uh, and as we've heard from the reading from Ezekiel, where the river flows, everything will live. I love that. Where the river flows, everything will live. But because of climate change, some parts of our world are experiencing terrible droughts, fires, California at the moment, while other parts are experiencing terrible floods. Recent monsoon rains and floods have left many people dead and thousands more homeless in Pakistan. There's been record flooding across the Sahel, the region of Africa just south of the Sahara. Much of Senegal's capital, Dakar, was submerged last week after a year's worth of rain fell on the city in a single evening. Sudan has seen the worst Nile flooding for over a century, and parts of France have seen flooding that they've not seen for a century. That's now. That's France. Europe. Anyway, water is vital, essential for life. But, like fire, it needs to be treated with respect, just as we must care for and look after the whole earth, the world that God has given us, to help the whole ecosystem flourish. The psalm that we said together says how God waters the earth and enriches it abundantly, so that it provides food for people and for animals, which is what God intends. But in the conversation that Jesus had with the woman at the well in Samaria, we realise that there's another resource from God that we human beings need. Jesus said to the woman, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Now we were made to function on water and food and other things of course. But human beings need something more to be fully human I believe and to function as God has designed us. Jesus went to uh, festival in Jerusalem during the Feast of Tabernacles, also known as the Feast of Booths, Sukkoth, Sukkot, which is actually taking place now, I think it's from the 2nd to the 9th this year. And it's in memory of when the Israelites made temporary shelters to remind them of how God provided for them when they came out of Egypt, when they were in the desert. It's one of the harvest festivals of the Jewish people. Uh, where they brought offerings to the temple to thank God for all that he provided for them. And uh, on the, during this festival, Jesus was in the temple and he stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. 
Let anyone who's thirsty come to me and drink. So yes, we need to thank God for plentiful water, which is essential for our life on the earth, but also to thank God for the spiritual water which he provides, which enriches our lives so that we may be a blessing to others. Everywhere the water goes, life comes. So let's remember that scripture from Jesus standing in the temple during the Feast of Sukkot, saying, whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, who those who believed in him were later to receive. Let everyone who is thirsty come to me, Jesus said, and drink. Let's pray. Lord, we really do thank you for this wonderful world that we live on. Help us, Lord, to look after the world. Give us your strength to enable us to do that. Thank you for the world that you've given us. But also, Lord, please may you fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we in turn may bring life to others. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now in our order of service, we have the hymn. So would you like to stand for Come Ye Thankful People, Come.
seated now for our intercessions. Let's pray together. Generous God, at this harvest time, we thank you for all the good things you give us. As we thank you for our food, we remember all those who do not have enough for even one proper meal each day. Lord, bless all those who suffer because of the greed of others. As I continue with my prayers, as I say, Lord of the harvest, please would you respond, hear our prayer. We pray for the homeless and those who depend on the charity of others. We pray for the work of local food banks like Nourish, providing food for those in need. Help us to share the harvests of the world more fairly, so everyone can be fed and there will be no more starvation. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. At this harvest time, we thank you for the hard work of all those who grow, protect and prepare our food, for the shopkeepers, the transport delivery drivers, the processors and the farmers. Bless all those, Lord, who do not earn a fair day's pay for their hard work, both at home in the UK and in other countries across the world. Help us to want to buy local produce and fairly traded goods wherever we can, so that everyone can work with dignity and there will be no more poverty. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. At this harvest time, we thank you for the world we see around us, for the flowers, the trees and the animals. Bless all those who care for them, Lord. Help us to protect your creation by being careful about how we use your resources, so that there will be clean water, clean air, and plenty of wild birds, mammals, and insects to maintain the ecological balance of our countryside. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all that is good in your creation, and all who bring in the harvest of the sea and the land, we are conscious of so much that we get wrong. So we give you thanks too for your grace and patience with us when we fail to look after your world as we should. Help us to change so that we too may be a new creation walking in the light of your gospel. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. At this harvest time we ask for your blessing on our families friends and our neighbours, and on those who are sick, remembering especially those known to us in this moment of silence. We pray for those whose lives have been gathered into your presence, whose work here is done, and we thank you for them, especially for the way that their lives have shaped our lives. This week we remember from our Book of Remembrance, on October the 6th, Richard John Mason, on the 7th, Frederick James Gow, and Sheila Graham, on the 8th, Roger Clive Collins, on the 9th, William Henry Hewitt, also on the 9th, Rick Langridge. Help us to recognise the independence of all life and the importance of just relations and community. And help us become good stewards of all you continue to give us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. Source of all life and giver of all that is good, hear our prayers and grant us all that is in accordance with your will. 
as our Saviour taught us, so we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So as we thank God today for our daily bread, please remember to pray for farmers and for MPs, because I think there's a new agricultural bill because of Brexit that is going through Parliament at the moment. And of course, if we get this wrong, farmers are just going to be destitute. So um, please do bear them in mind and bear this process in mind as we pray for them. Let's stand now for our final hymn. two of that hymn. Thy bounteous hand confessing upon thine altar, Lord, we lay the first fruits of thy blessing. Thank you all so much for those who have brought some harvest gifts. We'll leave them here for the germs to die off. And then uh, I shall transport them to Tamajuel's to an appropriate place where I'm sure people will be very appreciative of that. Um, do remember this afternoon, please, Four o'clock in St Mary's will be our family service, and we're entertaining the Bishop of Tunbridge, Simon Burton Jones. So, um, if you want to come to that, you'd be very welcome. 
And now, uh, finally, a Celtic blessing. Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of Christ, the light of the world, to you. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rain fall softly on your fields. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. Amen. Amen. And just before Bob uh, finishes our service off with some music, um, can we be sensitive of social distancing as we leave the church, please? And, um, and also, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, that um, uh, Paul Allen chose the hymns for this morning. So thanks to him. And remember him and Hillary.